Seahawks defensive tackle Craig Terrell has been back on the field for the Hawks post-draft minicamp. And he's also getting back on the stage to crank out some of his, I still love this stuff, great Midwestern-flavored rock and roll. Uh, is, is, is your name Craig Mellencamp Terrell? How does it? Cougar Terrell. Cougar Terrell. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Craig and his band will be playing tunes from his album CT Monday night at the Triple Door. Big show, right? Good musicians? Yeah, got a great band and uh, it's going to be a great show. Really looking forward to it. Welcome back to the show. How are you? It's good to be here. How are you guys doing? Good. Great, man. The boss didn't draft five players to do my job here in the morning. I, I feel pretty confident about my gig. I know you signed, you signed a, last time we were here, you just signed a new deal with the Hawks. Um, and then I also heard that you you stepped up and had him renegotiate your contract to make room for the defense. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Uh, me you and did like the really nice thing. Three other guys as well. Um, I think it was Patrick Kearney, Deion Grant, and um, oh, I can't even remember the last one, but. It's okay. Anyway, the four of us, yeah, they uh, kind of moved our contracts around a little bit and freed up some money right away so they could get Lofa signed. And um, I think when you got a guy like Lofa Tatupu, you don't you don't pass up signing him for you know the rest of his career. Well, a grateful he's, he's that kind of a player. Thanks you for doing that. What uh, what should we expect this year? I know it's always optimistic at this point. It is. It is. I think every team uh, thinks they're going to win the Super Bowl at this at this time of the year. Uh, maybe not Miami, but give me. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> give me the. Uh, let's do it this way. Give me the uh, the number one reason you think we should think that way, and then maybe the number one challenge that you think still exists. Uh, I think the the change that I saw in this mini camp, um, our defense carrying over from last year, and talking about you know in the meetings we'd sit in there and it wasn't just sitting there watching uh, endless film that that really didn't mean anything. We were sitting in there talking about the things that we did wrong last year letting the team run the ball too much on us, you know, not playing well on the road. And we talked about those things and talked about how we had to get them fixed for this season. So as a defense, I think we made uh, made some good steps in the right direction as far as becoming a better unit this year. And, and, you know, we all like each other. We're all playing for each other. It's not a bunch of guys out there playing for money or, or playing for themselves, you know. And I think that's when the great teams happen is when you have 11 guys who really want to who really want to win for each other. Well, and you, there's one guy in particular you got to want to win for. This is Cole Chongren's last year. I mean, he, he's going out, and you know darn well he wants to go out a winner. I saw in the paper this morning that he's dropped 25 pounds. He's uh, he's getting in shape for the season. Is he a meaner man when he's hungry? Uh, he's looking good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, he can he brings intensity to the, to the practice field, let alone the game field. So, you know he means business. I mean, I, I think a lot of coaches going into the last year might just, you know, say whatever happened happens but he's uh, he's determined does he uh does it does it mean anything for you to compliment him say hey look a good coach or does he just ah, get out of my face you're just trying to butter me up yeah you just you, you don't lay buy. off on the compliments <laughs> yeah <laughs> not worth it uh and and now um I, I took a look at the schedule this year and you guys play the nfc east which is tough but you play the afc east i should say which is not i mean every team every team in the nfl thinks they go in the super bowl but you got miami you got the jets you got the bills you also got the Patriots. I predicted 12 wins this year. I looked at the schedule, and barring injury, I don't think that's an unrealistic claim. Uh, do you guys think about a number of wins when you go in? Or, I mean, you, got, you guys, do you go in 16-0? and 0? Does anybody really do that? Uh, I, think you, I think your first goal is to get the home field advantage because that is such a big thing in the NFL and the playoffs if you, can, uh, if you can lock up that home field advantage. So you have to win whatever it takes to get that, you know, because um, if teams have to fly to Seattle and play in Quest Field, you know, it's a, it's in a completely different ball game. We found that out in the snow. I got an idea for you. You know, everyone says, "Oh, we we'll take it one game at a time." I think the four game at a time philosophy would be a really good. <laughs> <laughs> Bring yeah, it up, little, yeah. little mini blocks. Yeah, let's go, go for it. Uh, your band, tell me, tell me a little bit about the evolution of that. Now, how, is this? Uh, it, it can't be too much of a distraction, otherwise, it would be in, it would be trouble for you, right? Yeah. At oh. least, at least you're not like riding uh, daredevil, evil can evil motorcycle uh, or anything. <laughs> I've like been that. to ice race with spike tired bikes this weekend. <laughs> you're hope, not going to get. Find out. You're not putting your body at risk with this no uh rock and roll is a little easier on the knees than football so yeah. uh you know i got a great band and, and they're all guys uh mostly that played on my album so it just kind of it made sense when i was trying to put a, a live band together and, mike mattingly right herding yep. cat yeah Absolutely. he's great yep incredible guitarist so a good craig you guys. you mentioned uh as a as a hawk you are involved in all kinds of charities and in fact also are planning a trip or have been to africa uh planning 
my wife and I really want to are interested in mission trips and uh, uh, especially in Zimbabwe and and Africa is a uh, Zimbabwe been a little bit uh, difficult to get into as of late. Yeah, it has. Um, we actually tried to go um, about a year ago, and it was uh, kind of tough with the political unrest over there and and football schedule. Um, kind of messed it up a little bit as well, so we couldn't we couldn't go on the trip. But we hopefully we'll get over there within the yeah, next year or two. What makes you and your wife want to do this sort of trip as opposed to just write a check? Because people, you know, people think ah, if you've got a good career and you're making money, you can write a check. Writing a check is really easy, isn't it? Uh, but actually experiencing it is something. Absolutely, I think uh, when you get in the situation, you're not just you know mailing your check overseas and then and just forgetting about it. You. You go over there, and it probably changes your life more than it changes the people's lives that you're uh, over there trying to help. So when you get in the situation, see the kids that you're helping, I think it, it's just so much more gratifying. You asked me when you first came in, was it, were you surprised when you saw Africa? Was it what you expected it to be? Yeah. What do you expect it to be? Uh, I'm not sure. I know we talked like we have our visions from the movies and stuff, and... And, you know, you watch Blood Diamond and you just think people are going to be shooting everywhere and it's just going to be a, <laughs> a, a dangerous area. But um, I, I, I don't even know what to expect. Um, probably just uh, very humbling for, uh, for me probably to see the kind of conditions that some people have to live in. And, and it's just as simple as being born over there, you know, as opposed to in the United States. Yeah, I will tell, uh, we were talking during the break. I will tell you that uh, wherever you are, that's your reality. So if you've never been out off of this content, uh, continent, this is your reality. And when you are standing in this village several days in a row, it becomes your reality. And Seattle becomes this mythical faraway place where, you know, you had this life and other people live and everything is, is, is bright and polished like the Wizard of Oz, you yeah. know, la, 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 la. You just picture everything back there. It's just like this magical, clean, everything works. Everybody has plenty. Even the people that don't have plenty have relatively plenty. speaking plenty. And, um, but then you start to know the people and you realize, oh my gosh, there is no difference between these people and me. Just the hands of fate. It's not like they made a bad decision to be born in a little village. Uh, and uh, and they had what they had, so uh, cool. It's neat that you and your wife are. Which wife's name? Rachel. Rachel. Yep. She's got a good. She's got a big heart. She does. Huge. How hard is it to be married to a Seahawk? Uh, I try to make it as easy as possible. On her. <laughs> Comparatively, <laughs> some make it harder than others. <laughs> <laughs> you are a pretty good choice for her. Uh, I I try to be. I, I remind myself that uh, I should be her husband first and a football player second. That's so. I, I was. That's sort of where I was going. I mean, yeah. you you tra She can't travel with you all the time, right? You got kids? Uh, we don't. Not, Not yet. yet. Not but she yet. can't. Does Does she travel with you all the time? No, no. On the road, my uh, wife would watch me like a. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my wife would like to. <laughs> No, she would love to be there with me, but actually, it'd be uh, we'd lose time together if she tried to go on the road games with us, because you know she wouldn't be allowed to stay in the hotel. We travel on our own plane. So, mm. what is life like when you travel? What, is, what kind of what kind of camp does Coach travel? How, do you guys lock down when you get on the road as a team? Yeah, it's very it's a business trip. Um, you know, right down the last minute, uh, we get there, we get into a city and can go out to dinner maybe for a couple hours, and then we're back in the hotel at meetings, and then we're in bed check get up, play the game on the plane, come home. How nice is Quest Field to step on? I know that home field advantage, you mentioned that getting home field advantage is the main goal yeah. for the postseason. I mean, it's, that's, that's great. It's, it's kind of a foregone conclusion that this team better win the division, better make the postseason. Home field advantage is important. What's Quest Field like compared to other ball clubs, other ballparks? I've never been in a place that has so much energy um, as, as far as the fans bring to the field. Um, you know, they talk about the history of like Green Bay and places like that, and and they might have the the years behind them and the legacy, but just as far as a, as the energy on a Sunday afternoon that uh, the fans bring to Quest Field, I've, it's it's unbelievable. We lost our highest profile player, obviously Sean Alexander's been cut loose, but we signed Julius Jones, a, a great running back. Now I know you're on the defense, so you're not part of the offensive plan, but you get to chase these guys around at practice. Is Julius maybe a little step quicker? You think we've picked something up there? Julius looked great through mini camp, and actually our whole um, running back um, group looks incredible. T.J. Duckett and Mo Morris and Julius, um, just such great competition back there that I know. Whoever's carrying the ball on the field is just going to be bringing his best. Craig Terrell. Craig, uh, triple door in Seattle Monday night. 
links on our website. Thank you for your help in, uh, in bolstering the uh, charitable angle today with the World Vision. Really appreciate that, too. Absolutely. I commend you guys. You guys are doing great work.